all started 12 years back when I just cleared my 10th exams. I belong to a middle class family. If you uh, segregate the middle classes, then maybe the lower middle class fa family. And my dad used to work in State Bank of India. They're very famous for multiple transfers. So he was posted in a village with, with around one lakh population. My school had no fan, no lights, but I was okay with it. I was never a student who was interested in studies anyway. So the question is, in Indian context, when you clear your 10th, 11th, 12th are the years that is going to de decide your future. I'm sure every one of you have gone through that. And like any typical parent, it's like, if you're a girl and if you're not able to study properly, we'll get you married. So I was okay with everything, as long as I don't have to study hard. After a few days, my dad told me that, okay, we will try to get you into a good school, which is almost 60 kilometers away, only if you clear the entrance exam. My marks weren't great either. I think I scored some 75% in my 10th. So I was like, I was very sure that I'm not going to get it. Still, I went there, and as I was sure about it, I didn't get it. So my dad came home, and he's like, you are not going to do anything. You go and take admission to a BA become class, a study for two, three years, and then we'll find a boy for you. I was like, not bad. It's OK. Let me study. So I started off, I think one day, I went to this uh, BSc class. And then I realized that it's so much theory. Anyway, I couldn't mug. I screwed up my 10th. What to do if I have to learn so many things? So I told my dad that, fine, I want to uh, see what are, what are the opportunities apart from that college. He told that, do whatever you want. I'm not going to support, because you can't do anything anyway. So I went to that school from where they told my dad that I cannot get an entrance. So I went there, and I spoke to the principal that, uh, on what basis you decided that I should not be in your school? He told that, no, no basis, it's only marks. And I was like, OK, and what is the cutoff? It's like, at least 85. And I'm already having 100 students having 85 plus. Then I told him one thing, that uh, do you guarantee if someone has got 85 plus in their 10th uh, a better life? He was silent for a while. He was a gentleman from Tamil Nadu, and uh, they have anyway good literacy rate. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, do you think that the students who are in 85 or girls are not going to get married without doing anything in life, without uh, choosing a career of their own? Like, do you promise me that? He's like, no, but that is the way we decide how to take students. We need to have some sort of bar. And I'm like, fine, if you think that these all students are going to do great, and because I don't have that cutoff, I'm not going to do anything, then it's fine, I have nothing to say. Then he's like, no, wait a while. What, uh, what else do you want to say? I mean, I feel that it's not the marks that always decide what uh, someone is going to do in life. And he's like, what do you want to do in life? And I'm like, I, I don't have the answer yet, but I'm sure those whom you admitted doesn't have the answer either. Then he's like, um, OK, do one thing. You come with your parents tomorrow, and uh, I will think about it. And I was like, you already spoke to my parents, and he is not interested in pursuing further. So what else do you want me to do? He's like, OK, fine. Then uh, you wait for a phone call from the school. If we decide to keep you, then we will invite you. Fortunately, I got that. And I thought that coming from a village to a better school will change my life, which was entirely wrong. Things moved, of course, but a little. It's not that everything has changed. I had to study hard, and the same thing prevailed. Your marks, your entrance, and your future. So obviously, all, all the students except me who got 85 plus were rushing for IIT entrance. If not IIT, then NIT. If not NIT, then we'll think something. Few of them decided to go for medicine. And uh, I, I still remember, we were five of them who decided to Keep bio and maths both. So my parents told that because we are not sure of you, you better keep both. At least you'll hit something. So I was like, fine. I'll, I'll take bio and maths both together. And uh, I finished my class 12th. 
after that, the, de the de decision point came. When, when you have kept your biology and you have kept your mathematics, which field you are going to do? You have two entrance exam to give. It means you have to prepare twice for both the entrance exam. So like usual, my parents told that, see, if you become engineer, you might go to US, you might leave us forever and never come back to India. You'll never see us. You better take medicine. The best part is you'll sit at home, you can take care of your family and you can still earn. So that was the logic behind how you choose your career. For me, I was like, I was never into mugging things in crude world. For me, it has to be something practical. But though my maths mark wasn't great enough, I could get through NIT or PMT. So PMT is more glorious than NIT. So my parents said, see, we told you, you are meant to be a doctor. So I went ahead with medicine. And I got my entrance exam cleared, got a medical college in Bangalore. And then something changed. In fact, everything changed. What I realized was, it's not the talent that divides people into what they are going to do in life. Of course, it matters, but it also matters what the level of exposure is. For example, when I came to Bangalore, everybody except for me was from a metro. If not a metro, then a place like Kanpur, which is like way better than the village in the remotest of northeast of India, ordering Bangladesh. So I was out of place. People used to treat me as, oh my god, I mean, she knows nothing. They used to go for movies, and I'm like, 70 rupees for PVR? This is way too much. And then slowly I started to think that, what is the difference between me and the other people? I never realized what is called brand. I mean, they go for malls because they want to do branded shopping. For me, shopping was all like what you get in the market. It took me a while to understand what is brand and there are many other things like that. So I was like, I mean, you know, what did I do wrong or maybe different that differentiates me today with my peers? And then slowly I started to you know, talk with them to understand from where, I mean, what, what did they study? They all had glorified marks. They coming from early public school or Catholic schools. So I realized that the same question paper that we faced, that I faced, I had a CBSC board, so the qu same question paper that I faced and my friends faced, the preparation was night and day. I, for me, it was only CBSC books that had almost nothing. Like I'm okay to say that NCRT books have nothing. And they had all sort of preparation materials. And then slowly one day I thought that I will see how these preparation materials look like. And that day onwards, I started to regret that maybe I could have done better. But then I had no other choice. I was never exposed to such materials. I didn't even realize that such things even exist. So I went to a shop to see what exactly preparation material is. And then I saw that a NCRT book having 200 pages and a preparation material for biology having 1,500 pages. It's, it's just different. So I came back home and I'm like, okay, fine. Now that I'm in a Bangalore, in a cosmopolitan, almost metropolitan city, I should do well. I studied day and night like crazy. People used to call me bookworm then. And things were very different. The first year I got first place and my dad is like, oh my God, is that you? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And my dad is like, are you sure you didn't cheat? And I'm like, no, no, we had video cams in the classroom. So there is no chance. And they still couldn't believe it even. I was once upon a time like, if I'm able to solve this today, why I couldn't do that previously? And slowly I spoke to a few people who are in that field and I realized that there was a lot to do with the preparation. It was not only about that someone is not talented and then you make them think the way for the rest of his or her life. But like any other medical school student who had no time for herself, I kept on studying for five years and uh, after I graduated in my internship one day I found a man coming to me. I mean he was an educated man working with a Yahoo in Bangalore and he came and he's like uh, I have severe pain on the left side of my stomach and I feel uh, the left liver is not working. I was like I didn't get it first. I was like what did you say? I, was like, I think my left liver is not working. I was like okay don't have left liver. 
And he is like, no, no, I mean, I mean, there are two of them, one is not working. And then I realized what is wrong in India. In India, it's not the marks, it's not the job, it's not the tag that you carry along being an IITN or an MNC person with you that makes you successful. It's a knowledge which is entirely different from all the brands that you gather the rest for your life. So he came to me and I told him about what his body is all about. I told him how many liver he has and he's like, oh my God, I didn't know that. And then I slowly started looking for those people whom I ignored previously maybe. So th then I found many such people who come up with similar kind of things. And I realized that the knowledge is quite less. I mean, you teach someone, the theoretical part is fine, maybe they become good engineers or doctors, but the general knowledge among the common population is very, very different. So I thought that I want to understand what India is all about. Naturally, like in my, uh, uh, in my previous years, I never had the opportunity to read a lot of general knowledge books and etc. So I thought that I, instead of taking internship in a medical school, I will take internship in a political place. So I started my internship in Parliament of India. Took rural postings to understand how the 70% of India, which is rural, looks like. As soon as I went there, I thought that I need to earn something for myself throughout the internship. So I took a job in NGO, went to a field, went to a rural school, and I saw a girl sitting on the arenda and crying. They went to her and, she's, uh, and asked her that, why are you crying? She's like, I'm hungry for last two days. And I'm like, why? She's like, because my mom feels that men should eat. They're going to expand the family. Girls don't need to eat that much. She gives all good things to my brother. And the leftover things I, I get to eat. And then I wash utensils. I do everything I need to come to school and he gets to play, so I don't know how to continue, but I really want to read. So I went and b being an intern from the Parliament of India, you keep a lot of, like you have a lot of power. So like with a bold face, I went to the principal to say that. I need to talk to her parents. I got her parents the next day and they started blasting me. What do you think? I mean, you have a rich dad and he will be running with 100 men. What do you want? She is our daughter and I, I don't want her to send outside. So we made them understand, but they were not ready to understand, so at last we had to leave. But this is not one case that is there in India. We have almost 70% of Indian population. If I even take five person per family, having one or two or three girls, then you can imagine how many girls are suffering from this. This is one side of the story that hit me, but the internship went on for two years. So I get to see many different things. One major thing that I wanted to explore was what it takes someone to get into IIT or NIT and someone to get into a very normal school, do a job with two lakh salary and go nowhere in life. To explore that, I thought that I will go to different schools, different government schools where the rural population go for their education. Surprisingly, the teachers don't even come to school. There were many NGOs that work sometimes, most of the times, in fact, it doesn't work that way. So I thought that, you know, I mean, if I coming from a village to a metropolitan has, like, has changed my life to a certain extent, just imagine a person smarter than me living in rural area get that exposure, what will happen to that person? The whole cycle of poverty and illiteracy will break. But the problem was, when you want to do something in India, and being a girl, you have to face many things. If you want to do something of your own, that's the best thing, because you don't have to question to a lot of people. But at the same time, when you start something by yourself, there are a lot of forces that will restrict you from doing that. It will start from your own family that, oh my God, what about your career, a job? Indians are very much used to having a job that gives you monthly salary, which is fixed and you don't have to worry for anything else. Doing something which is offbeat, 
I mean, you are a doctor and you want to do something else, or maybe you're an engineer, you want to start up your company. Unless and until you get ready funding or your dad is rich, it becomes a little tough to make sure that okay, you'll be safe. So I decided that uh, I will take up a job and will try to do something. But taking up a medicine, a career in medicine that I was never interested in was not something I wanted to do. So I again went to my parents and they were like, we thought that you became a little normal, but you were as crazy as you were before. Now you want to leave your medicine after doing that. And I'm like, yeah, because I want to pursue something that I love doing for 24 hours a day if needed. So they told that fine. Anyway, we are not in a position to pay for your expenses li living in a metro. Maybe you can search something of your own. So luckily at that time, I got one role in a medical college in Netherlands. So I instantly took off. I mean, you're suddenly from rupees to euros, a uh, good kick in the beginning. So I instantly took off and that actually helped me. And again, that phenomena made me realize that how brand name is important in India. So before that, I applied for a management firm. In the final rounds, one of my partners asked me that everything is fine, but what do I do? I mean, what do I go and tell my client that I have a doctor without an MBA in India with us? I realized that day how much important a brand is. It's not that you understand healthcare industry very well. It's about what is a tag which is in front of you. Obviously, it didn't work out. And at that time, I realized that, okay, fine. If I don't have an MBA, I, have to, I need something flashy. And that Netherlands job was quite good at that time to serve that purpose. I went there and exactly it happened. This consulting firm suddenly, in a span of two months, they felt that I am good for consulting. I didn't know that uh, what did I learn in the last two months, but they felt because now we have an international degree and a flashy career. So I thought that it's good to get some money to take your life ahead and do whatever you want. So I readily took a job in Netherlands. But that time I realized that working for a while is okay, but I wanted to understand, I would, maybe I wanted to change that thing in India where a brand name or maybe a lack of exposure divides those talent into two entirely different segments. So I came back to India and started this nonprofit organization where I wanted to tr track those students who are smart, but they are not able to get adequate exposure. Now to do that, the major challenges were from where to start. I mean, if you look at the list of NGOs, it's like you can't even finish reading them for a month. So I was thinking that which was that sector that we can grab? Where all would I find those students? Because if it happens in rural area that they don't want to send their girls or they don't want to send their boys far away from a village, then it will still prevail. No, nothing will change in two or three years. So we thought that with the least cost, we can sustain, I mean, we can build a model that, that is self-sustainable. Because if you are building something like an organization, be it a for-profit company or not for-profit company, you need resources. I couldn't go to all the places to teach students. I need resources who can do that. And then I realized that if I get a college and if I get some volunteers from that college, to teach the students, that would be great. When it comes to deciding what should I teach, after my experience, I chose engineering because that is the fastest way to get a stable career, at least. Better than medicine. For medi in medicine, you need to study for 10 or 15 years before you start. So, so after I decided that, I tried with uh, two schools they were not ready because uh, they feel that uh, the villagers won't come. So I decided to go for a pilot with uh, one of these IITs. And it actually helped. Like it helped, we decided to keep five students and we could send two of them to IIT. So it was a major success for us. We thought that no, it's, it's not that financial condition or your exposure did, decides where you go. If, if, like if you are able to provide the students with proper preparation, if like if you give them adequate expo exposure, they would be able to do much better in life. And then slowly we started with different organ, uh, different colleges. We tried to take the attention of the volunteers from the college itself to reduce our cost. And then we slowly kicked off. But the major learning from there that I want to share with you all is that the 
mental roadblock that we all suffer from, if not all, that majority of us suffer from. It's, it, it, it all starts from Indian household mentality. You study to earn. Yes, it's true to have a financial security. It's important to have a financial security. But in, in that race of having a financial security, we tend to do something that maybe at times we don't like. So what happens in that race? If you don't like something, then your work seems to be like a burden. If you're not interested, you'll start looking at the watch and, oh my god, it's 5 PM. I can leave in another one hour. But if you think that way, that you're passionate for something, and you want to do that, in spite of 100 people saying that you won't be able to do, I would suggest that the young people like you should definitely try it once. And it, it's not that you keep everything at stake. A at your age, at the age in which you are in, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Because if the, passion, if the path of passion that you chose doesn't work, you can anyway go back to your original track. But if it works, then it becomes a good success. For girls, especially when it comes to girls, in India it still prevails that, oh my god, you're 25 and you're not looking for guys. It, it's still there. I mean, it's a hardcore truth. By the age you become, I mean, by the time you become 25, 26, even your parents feel that, okay, fine, you're busy with your clients, but it's important to see other things also. It's okay. I mean, I'm not saying that you should not do all these things. It's, it's okay to do. But having a career, of what you want, and at least trying for that is definitely worthy.